All right, we're back, and we've cleaned this board, and uh, we've got all the capacitors replaced, and we're getting ready for a power-up check here. So, here's the Mac chip that belongs in that socket. And I've got to be really gentle with this here. They're, these chips are all but irreplaceable at the moment. person who removed this from its previous home bent some pins. So, I think we're good. Let's just see. Yep, yeah, looks good. All right. All right. So that's installed, and now we got to install a display to be able to see anything from this. A little plastic piece for the power switch. And this has an edge connector here. I uh, guess what they call a zebra strip. It's a piece of rubbery type material with uh, electrical contacts rubbing, running through it. So I'm going to clean these pads on the circuit board here again that it seats to. I fully expect there'll be some headache with that part of the display. And this pops on here. Got about nine volts set on the bench power supply. I don't have a nine volt battery handy at the moment, so let's see what we got. All right, well that's promising. It's not immediately making a whole lot of sense to me. We pull up the manual and start checking power supply voltages here. Voltage is not making exact sense here, so I'm going to shut down for a minute until I figure it out. Alright, I'm getting 6.2 volts on what should be a 5.1 volt supply. I'm not going to go any farther than there until I figure that out. So, and in here it gives me information that possible suspects are U3, Q1, and VR1. U3 is the big chip, the Mac chip. And uh, I have tested that Mac chip in another meter, and it does not give the symptom in another meter. I'm inclined to believe that's good. But Q1 is... Um, a transistor. I believe it's a JFET. Um, like I said, I will get a close-up uh, close camera in here so that we can get you to in on the schematic here. But um, you, um, Q1 is a transistor that's driven by U3 as a series pass transistor on the voltage regulator. And uh, VR1 is a 6.2 volt zener that uh, clamps that power supply rail to ground. The fact that I'm reading 6.2 volts and that zener clamping is 6.2 volts is just a little bit too much of a coincidence. So my hunch 
is that the transistor Q1 is failed short and the uh, zener is clamping that rail. Which means that also that zener is probably getting fairly warm. I'm not going to keep messing with it until I figure that out here. So I'm going to pull and test Q1. And we'll see how that goes. Actually having a little difficulty figuring out exactly what a good replacement for that transistor was. In the meantime, I just robbed one off of another identical meter. part is marked uh, J2464, which I think is supposed to be a 2SJ2464, but I could be very wrong on that. Um, I'm going to have to wait until I sit down at the computer about that one. It uh, difficult to uh, read Chinese language uh, chip data websites on a mobile device. So I've just grabbed one off another board, and I've installed it on this one. And now I'm just putting the darn display back on again. I've got to be careful with this, because these screws thread into plastic. They're only going to take so many cycles of this. And things like the plastic are, again, absolutely... Well, I mean, they're irreplaceable without it being the sacrifice of another meter. The only good thing about these meters is that uh, they uh, well the fact that the uh, Mac chips are also irreplaceable means that there are some other good pieces out there All right, came back on All right, we got 5.1 volts at that test point, so that transistor was indeed the problem. Now we move on to the other problem that I was seeing here. Definitely got a little bit of an offset at the bottom of the range here. I'm seeing a negative. Well, it's, it's counting down. This does have an auto zero routine. About negative 19 millivolts, it looks like. I've seen online that this has been caused for some people by contamination of the chip. In other words, leakage power into that high impedance input of the Mac chip. So I'm going to do a little more cleaning here, I'm going to do a little more testing, probably off camera, and we will see where we're at. Alright, so I've watch, washed the board off a fair amount more with uh, isopropyl again, and I'm going to let that dry. And um, while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to uh, try to do some research about replacements for that JFET for the other meters. All right, so we're uh, putting this uh, Fluke 8060A back together here for another test. I've cleaned the board again. I've still stopped short of soaking the entire thing with alcohol, but uh, that may be what it comes to. Let's 
just find the screw I just dropped on the chair. So got the uh, microcontroller and the uh, display mounted back to the board and power supply these up. Let's see what we got here. Now that's looking a little bit more like it. The meter is zeroed. Well, sort of. Well, my fingers were touching the button. So, that meter is hovering right around zero. Alright, so I'm pretty pleasantly surprised about this. So now I'm going to work on getting this meter back together into a case. And once we get it back together completely, then we're going to verify that the calibration of the meter is acceptable. There's uh, two fuses in this meter, and one of them is only internal, uh, not user serviceable. The other one is external user serviceable. The internal fuse is a uh, sand filled or HRC high rupture current fuse rated at 600 volts. And uh, don't blow those things they are ridiculously expensive. Um, you can buy them from the Fluke store for about five dollars a piece which appears to be the best place to get them or from uh, Digikey or Mauser they're about thirteen dollars a piece. So if you just want one of them and you're ordering from Digikey anyway sometimes you can do better there but if you need more than one um, go to the Fluke website. They will, however, nick you for shipping, and it is pretty expensive. Um, but anyway, there's two fuses. The first is this HRC fuse, which is a special fuse. It's not intended to be user serviceable. And then on the back side of the same fuse holder, a uh, simple 2-amp fast blow glass fuse is the user serviceable fuse. And uh, I don't have any of those right now either but uh, I'm not going to be testing the amps range today. That's the only thing those fuses do is they protect the amps range. And uh, they are actually there more to protect you than to protect the tool. So that's the fuse and let me round up all the pieces I need to put this thing back together. So I've got my bin of uh, Fluke 8060 parts here, and I'm going to start putting these uh, cosmetic and case pieces back together. There's uh, two different colors of these buttons here, and uh, I need to consult online to figure out which one is supposed to be which. But um, I have an abundance of the dark color or black ones. I only have three of the light color ones, so I've for right now I've installed the light color ones on the function or function switches and we'll put the dark color ones on the range switches and I'll have to look up online if that's the correct way for it but it'll work for now and it'll give a little bit of division between the range and the function switches so at the moment that makes me happy so got the switch caps installed here um, most of the case pieces I have are in pretty hard shape as well. So, get to uh, figure all this out. 
part of the reason why I'm putting this back together before checking calibration is because the main uh, the uh, case does include some additional shielding for the main board, and this thing certainly isn't going to behave. I mean, can't be trusted to behave without all of its shielding. Right. I really wish I could do something else about that screw that's not there. But uh, that's what we got for right now. Alright. Now I'm going to set this thing up for a test of all ranges here. And I'm going to knock everything off my hook, which is storing my miscellaneous banana plugs. parts away before the cat gets it. And we'll power from a real battery this time. The meter is on. basically zeroed and let's see how I'm going to set this up so we've got a common we've got a voltage and I don't have any voltage standards in my lab if you will right now so the only calibration test I'm going to really have is to compare its tracking against my Fluke 8050 bench meter, which I know is pretty good. So, we've got a lot of comparison to do here, but just the initial that I uh, have plugged in here is that I've got the uh, 8060, well, I'm reading the 9 volts that I had been powering the 8060 with. I've got 9.067 on the 8060, and on the bench meter, I've got 9.071. So four counts difference roughly. Um, I'm on the 20 volt range on both meters here so and this power supply is capable of 20 volts. So I'm going to go up to near the top of the range here. I've got 19.743 on the 8060, I've got 19.749 on the uh, bench meter, so that's uh, six counts. So I'm going to head down for the bottom end here and get under two volts. Working with a non precision power supply here, to say the least. Um, Go down to the 2 volt range here, the 2 volt range up here. I've got 1.5644 on, or 5643 on the 8060. I've got 1.5643 on the bench meter. So voltage ranges are looking pretty decent at the moment. Um, I'm going to, let's see, let's go back to a 20 volt range, and well, I'm just going to sanity check the higher, the 200 and the 1000 ranges here. 
19.7. All right, so the least we're in we're in the right ballpark sanity check here. I did order a uh, DMM check from uh, I believe the the website is voltagereferences.com. I'll put the link down below, and uh, they take a relatively precision reference and then they measure it with a very precise meter. So it's a poor man's voltage standard. We'll see how that goes when I get it. And we got a, we do have a minor discrepancy between this meter that we've just repaired and the bench meter. I've got to do some checking and some math to see. We may actually even be within the uh, acceptable calibration of each of these meters. And then uh, we'll see which one is more accurate when that uh, voltage standard shows up here. But I can say that the voltage ranges here are working. So now we will... Uh, I'm going to turn this power supply off before I manage to short circuit something into my face. And we will uh, compare some resistance measurements here. I don't have a uh, precision AC source at the moment, so that'll be. that'll have to wait as well. I'm not really keen on sticking probes in a wall socket today, so. so I've got a 10K resistor here measuring 9.75 so I'm going to try that on the bench meter so resistance 20K range I've got 9.75, 9.76 on the bench meter as well, so it's probably just a crep tolerance resistor. These are, you know, these are five percenter, five percenters of uh, Chinese origin, so I don't have my hopes too far up for them. So, you now there's a lot more check, checking that needs to be done on this meter before I can so-called certify it for use, but. Um, Base functions are working, and uh, we've done sort of a sanity check on the measurements here, and we're definitely in the right ballpark, and it's probably good enough for 99% of the jobs we use a handheld meter for. So I'm going to continue consider this a success. Uh, we do have additional work to do because uh, well, this one did not come with none of the meters that I got. I bought four. Parts are not working, Fluke 8060s, and um, like I said most of the cover pieces I got are dinged up, and I did not get a single battery door for them. So, if somebody has a battery door from an 8060 or 8062, I've both I know that both of those will fit. Um, then let me know. But other than that, I'll continue to keep my eye out for parts, and I'm. Uh, happy that I've got a at least mostly working meter here out of the deal. So that's going to wrap up this video series. I'm going to shoot some more video if I uh, come across some of the parts that I need or uh, maybe on the second or third meters that I'm going to try to fix up. I've only got two of the uh, Mac chips, the re relatively rare fluke made chips. So we will uh, go from there and uh, see if we can at least get a second meter working and maybe a third one waiting for a chip if it should, if it should fall into my lap. Um, I'm shy a few more parts that are going to be difficult to obtain for the fourth, fourth board I know, so we'll see what we can do.